Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to provide an introductory quick start tutorial to using Google Calendar here in 2015. Make sure that you also check out my other Google Apps tutorials, my quick start tutorial for Google Drive and Gmail. I'll post links to those tutorials in the description of this video here on YouTube. Now to access Google Calendar you just need to go to google.com forward slash calendar and you'll have to sign in with a Google account if you already have one you can just sign in with the one that you already have if you don't have a Google account you'll need to create one now once you get logged in and you go to google.com forward slash calendar this is what you're going to see this is Google Calendar um, so let's start talking a little bit about the interface here and then we'll talk about creating events here in Google Calendar and cover all of the basic features to get you up and running. So first of all when you first log into your calendar you'll notice that there's a mini calendar over here to the left which shows you the current month that you're in, um, the current day, as you can see it's highlighted by a little box here, and if I wanted to move to a specific day I could click on it so I could you know, go straight to the week of uh, February 22nd to the 28th just by clicking on it and I can go back to today by clicking back on the third. It's important to notice that there are also two other sections over here on the left, one that says My Calendars and the other that says Other Calendars. We want to drop down these sections by clicking on the arrow to the left of them so we can see the calendars within those sections. Now you'll notice that I have a calendar that's called Anson Alexander and that's because I specified that my name is Anson Alexander when I created this Google account and it automatically created a default calendar for me which is the Anson Alexander calendar. We can actually create multiple calendars here within Google Calendar. So you could have your own personal calendar, then you could maybe have a work calendar, you could have a shared calendar with your spouse so you know uh, where the kids activities are, what, what they're doing at any given time, each of you can add events to that calendar. So you can have as many calendars here in Google Calendar as you want. You might even have a business and you might have a calendar for your sales team, your marketing team, all the different departments within your company. And we'll talk about creating some new calendars uh, here in a minute. But first I want to finish going over the user interface. So by default, when we first start creating events, it's going to go on our default calendar, which in my case is Anson Alexander. There's also a birthdays calendar that would uh, include birthdays from contacts within your Google account. They'll automatically be added to your calendar. And then down here under other calendars, we have just the U.S. holidays calendar, which will show us the United States holidays. Now, by default, when we log into Google Calendar, we're in the weekly view. So you can see we're looking at this whole week, Sunday to Saturday, but we can change that view by these buttons up here at the top. So I could look at just a daily view, which uh, really I don't use that much because it's so much space. You usually don't need to, to zoom into one particular day because the weekly view uh, will show you quite a bit of what you need to see. And, and you'll notice that as we start creating events here in Google Calendar. And then we also have the monthly view, uh, which is one of my favorite views. You can see that we do have a couple of events on our monthly view. These are from the U.S. holidays calendar. And notice that they're the same color uh, as the U.S. holidays calendar. You, you notice the square to the left of the holidays calendar is the same color as the events on our calendar. When we create events uh, in a few minutes here, I'm actually going to change the color of this calendar. And you'll notice that the events I create under the Anson Alexander calendar will have the same color of the Anson Alexander calendar on our actual Google Calendar to let us know that they are associated with that particular calendar. So if you have 10 calendars here in Google Calendar, you can see which calendar each event is associated with based on the color of the event. Now we also have a four day view up here. It's similar to the weekly view, but it just gives you a little more space for each day. So if you have a lot going on, that might be helpful. And then we also have an agenda view, uh, which is really great if you have a lot of meetings. You'll notice that I don't have really any events on my calendar right now. All I have is the holidays. Uh, but if I had, say, 10 events in one day, I could go to the agenda view, and it would drop down uh, my 10 events. I would see what time they're at, what order they're in. So it would really help you plan out uh, your day by looking at the agenda view. So let's go back to the weekly view and let's go ahead and create an event. There's a couple of ways to create an event here in Google Calendar. I could click on the big red create button up here at the top left. However, when I do that, I'm going to have to manually specify the date and time of that event uh, completely because I'm just creating an event using the button instead of clicking on my calendar, which is my favorite way to do it. So let's say I have an event tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, February 4th, and it's a lunch event. What I can do is I can just mouse over to the day that the event is on, so it's on Wednesday, so you can see the days go across the top and the times, the hours go down the side. 
So I can just mouse over to the day and time where the event is going to take place, and then I can just single click. And you'll notice when I do that, an event starts to appear on my calendar, and I can go ahead and I can start specifying what this event is. So where it says what, that's going to be the title of the event. So we'll just call this lunch meeting. Now I could go ahead and hit the create event button right from here. It's going to create an event on Wednesday, February 4th from 12 to 1 p.m. because by default it's an hour long called lunch meeting and it would be on my calendar. However, generally speaking, you're going to want to specify some more information about an event when you create it. So instead of clicking the create event button, I'm going to click on the blue edit event link. When I do that, it takes me to a new screen where I can specify all of the information about this event. So we can see here's the title that I already added, here's the date, here's the time. So let's say it's not 12 to 1, let's say it's 12 to 1.30, it's a little bit longer. I can go ahead and change that. I could also manually change this by, you know, deleting and I could make it to 1.31 if I wanted to. Um, if it's an all-day event, I could click on the all-day checkbox right here. If it's a repeating event, this is a great feature here in Google Calendar. Let's say you have this lunch meeting that's going to happen every single week on Wednesday. I can click this repeat checkbox, and the repeat box pops up, and I can specify when this event is going to repeat. So I can have it repeat daily, every weekday, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can see the number of different options here, uh, yearly, monthly. I'm going to have this repeat weekly. So it's going to repeat every one week. Alternatively, I could make it repeat every two weeks, every three weeks. You have a lot of options here. Uh, we want it to repeat on Wednesday. It's going to start on February 4th. Do we ever want that repeating event to end? You know, maybe after a year, we're no longer going to have that lunch meeting. So I can say, you know, after um, 52 occurrences. But for now, I'm just going to say never. And then I can click done here at the bottom. And so now this event will repeat weekly every Wednesday. If we want to specify where this event is going to take place, we could go ahead and enter a, lo a location in the where field. If we wanted to have a Google Hangout associated with this event, maybe this is just an invitation to a Hangout, we could actually add a link to the Hangout by clicking on the Add Video Call button right here. The Calendar section is where we can specify which calendar within Google Calendar this event is going to be placed on. So right now you can see I only have one calendar here, but in a few minutes I'm going to show you how to create another calendar here in Google Calendar. And when I do that, that second calendar would also be listed as an option here in the calendar section. So I could add it to whichever calendar that I'd like to add it to. You could go ahead and add a description of the event in the description box. We can change the event color if we'd like, but again, if you're going to be using multiple calendars here in Google Calendar, it's a good idea to keep the default calendar color so that you know which event is associated with which calendar. Down here at the bottom, this is a really important feature. We can add notifications for events here in Google Calendar. So we have a few different options. We can have either a pop-up notification or an email notification. The pop-up notification you're only going to get if you're in Google something, so in your Gmail, your Drive, or your Google Calendar account, or if you have it set up on your mobile phone. However, if you're not logged into Google, you're not going to get that reminder. So I tend to use email reminders, and you can choose, do you want that notification to happen 30 minutes before the event, a certain amount of hours, days, or weeks? So you know you can do, let's say, one day before the event, and then we can even add a second notification. We can also have ourselves emailed one hour before the event so that we you know we know what's coming up in an hour we can prepare for it we can add as many notifications as we'd like so you could add also a week notification so you get notified a week before the event down here where it says show me as this basically means when other people are trying to invite you to events if I choose for this event that I want to be shown as busy when somebody else tries to invite me to another event at the same day and time it'll let them know hey Anson's busy at that time are you sure you want to invite him or I could choose available and they wouldn't get that warning it would automatically invite me to that second event down in the visibility section we can specify who will be able to see this event. So the default option is calendar default, which means when we have calendars here in Google Calendar, we have the ability to share those calendars. Uh, by default, it's not shared. We're the only person that has access to a calendar within our Google Calendar. Uh, but if we leave this as calendar default, this event is going to be visible to anybody that has access to this particular calendar. And I'll show you how to share a calendar here in a few minutes. We could also make this a public event so anybody could see it. Or we could make it a private event, which means even if this is a shared calendar, people who can see the calendar won't see this event because we've made it private. 
Now the last section here on the event creation screen is the add guests section where we can go ahead and we can invite people to join us in this event. So I could go ahead and I could enter my other email address here, webmaster at antonalex.com and I could go ahead and I, I clicked on it to add it so you can see that you know I'm going to this event because I created it that's this account right here Anson Alexander but now webmaster at AntonAlex.com is also invited he's going to get an email notification and this event is automatically going to appear on his default Google Calendar so if you have multiple people using Google Calendar you can just invite them to an event and it's automatically going to appear on their calendar now down here at the bottom we can specify whether guests can modify the event, whether they can invite other people to the event, and whether or not they can see the guest list for this particular event. So this is how we can create an event here in Google Calendar. When you're ready, go ahead and click the red save button at the top of the screen. It asks me do I want to send invitations to my guests? Sure. So we'll click send. So now you can see I'm still in the weekly view of my calendar. I now have a lunch meeting scheduled from 12 to 1.30 p.m. If I go to the monthly view, I can see that that lunch meeting repeats every single week because we specified that we wanted it to repeat. Now if we go quickly back to the weekly view, I also want to show you that I can drag this event. Let's say the time changes. Instead of having to click on the event and then click edit event to change the details, which will bring us to the same screen we were just at, I can actually click this event. I'm going to click off it first here. I can actually click and I can drag this event to a different time. So that's just a nice little feature that I wanted to let you know about. Now let's quickly change the color of this calendar over here. So uh, when we mouse over a calendar on the left side of our screen, you'll notice that a little drop down arrow appears to the right. And if we click on it, there are a number of different options that we have regarding this particular calendar. So we can only display this calendar and, and hide all of our other calendars that we have here in Google Calendar. We can specify some advanced settings about this calendar. We can create an event. We could share this calendar. So I mentioned earlier we can share calendars. So if I click on share this calendar, I can just enter the email address of the person I'd like to share it with and they will be granted access to this calendar. We can also edit the default notifications for events on this calendar or we can actually change the color of the calendar, which is what I want to do because I want it to be different than the holidays calendar. So if I change this to red, you'll notice right away the event I have scheduled on this calendar changes. So now if I go to the monthly view and I have these holidays on my calendar, you'll notice that they're in the uh, purplish blue color, which is associated with the holidays calendar, and the lunch meeting events are red, which are associated with the Anson Alexander calendar, which is red. The reason there's a bar around these holidays events is because they are all day events, whereas our lunch meeting is a specific event at a specific time. When you start using a lot of calendars here in Google Calendar, you may want to display and hide some calendars. You might have a ton of information on here if all of your calendars are being displayed and you want to hide a few of them so you can focus on one or two specific calendars. To do that, all we have to do is click on the calendar that we'd like to show or hide over here on the left side of our screen. So if I click on the holidays calendar, you'll notice that the blue disappears from the left and all the events from the holidays calendar disappear from my calendar. If I click on my calendar, my lunch meetings disappear as well. If I click back on it, my lunch meetings come back in. If I click back on holidays, you can see our holidays come back in as well. So how can we create a second calendar here in Google Calendar? What we want to do is mouse over to the left side of our screen next to the My Calendar section, click on the little downward pointing arrow, and we can click Create New Calendar. From here we're at the Calendar Creation screen. We can title this calendar whatever we want. So we could call this Work Schedule. We could add a description if we wanted. We could add a location. We can specify the time zone. So United States, Eastern Time, that's fine for me. We can specify whether or not we want this calendar to be public. I don't want it to be public at this point. And we could also share this calendar with specific people if we wanted to. So you can share it with as many different people as you'd like who also have Gmail accounts. When you're ready, we can go ahead and click the Create Calendar button at the bottom of the screen. When I do that, you'll notice that the work schedule calendar now appears in my list, and I could quickly go in and I could create an event on that particular calendar. So we'll just call this conference. And we could go ahead and I could click edit event. And I'm just going to say, uh, let's say it's an all day event, it's on the 12th. The option that we need to specify for this one is we don't want it on the Anson Alexander calendar. So here in the calendar section, I'm going to put it on the work schedule calendar and I'm going to click Save. 
you'll now notice that I have a conference listed on my calendar. It's in a different color than my other events because it's the same color as the calendar that it's associated with. If I click on work schedule, that event is hidden because we've hidden the calendar. If I click on it again, the calendar is now displayed and so are all of the events on that particular calendar. Now the one last thing I'd like to show you in this introductory quick start video is how to uh, access and modify some of your Google Calendar settings. So to change some Google Calendar settings, what we can do is we can go up to the very top right of our screen and click on the gear icon. And uh, we have a few different options here. First of all, we can change the density of our calendar. So we can make it comfortable, which it is by default. We can make it cozy, uh, which sp spreads things out a little bit. We can make it compact, which squishes things together a little bit. So that's just uh, up to you. It's a personal choice. But what we really want to get to in this section is the settings option. So if we click on settings, this will bring us to our Google Calendar settings. And I'm not going to go through everything on this screen. You can take a look at this on your own time. Uh, but I think one of the most important settings to configure is your time zone. So we can specify which time zone we're in. You want to make sure that that's correct. It should be correct uh, based on where you currently are, your current location, uh, but you might want to check that and make sure. You can change your formats, uh, date format, time format. You can change which day your week starts on, whether or not you want to show weekends or not. And you can also change your default view. So like I said, by default, it's the weekly view, but if you like the monthly view, you could change that to monthly. And every time you access Google Calendar, it will start on the monthly view. When you're ready, you can go ahead and click Save at the top of your screen. So at this point, uh, you should understand how you can create events here in Google Calendar, how you can create multiple calendars, how you can share calendars with other people, how you can change the colors of your calendars, how you can display and hide calendars, how you can change views here in Google Calendar, and how you can access your Google Calendar settings. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube if you did find it helpful. If you'd like to see some more advanced tutorials on Google Calendar, please let me know the specific topics and features that you'd like to see in the comments section here on YouTube or on AntsonAlex.com, and I'll try and publish some more advanced tutorials on Google Calendar throughout the year. Also, don't forget to check out my Google Drive tutorial for 2015. I have a Gmail tutorial that I did in late 2014 that's still very relevant, but I will be updating that shortly. And again, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for today. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.